Hi, I'm Fernando Pereira from UFMG, and today we shall talk about type inference. That's a technique used to discover the type of expressions in statically typed programming languages. Many programming languages use type inference. However, the extent to which they do it varies. Some languages are more limited. For instance, in Kotlin, the compiler can infer the type of some variables from the expressions used to initialize these variables. But Kotlin's inference algorithm has limitations. For instance, functions must have their arguments annotated with type information. Scala also can infer the type of variables from initializers. Scala can infer the return type of simple functions too. But again, there are limits to what the Scala compiler can do. For instance, it forces programmers to annotate the arguments of functions with type information, just like Kotlin C does. In these two languages, it would be hard to infer the types of arguments. Possible, but hard. These languages support overloading, for instance. And then, how could we have overloaded functions if it's the signature that distinguishes them? But there are programming languages that do support some very strong form of type inference. Perhaps the best example is ML. The type inference algorithm can infer the types of almost every expression in the language, and these types can even be generic. So here you can see some examples of code and their types inferred by the ML compiler. In this case, we're using the implementation of SML New Jersey. So let's see how ML's algorithm works for this function, apply to fun. On the top of the figure, in this example, what do you know about the types of G and X? The input type of G must be the same type as X, because we have this call G of X in this expression. And what do we know about the types of F and G? We know that the return type of G must be the input type of F. And from these relations, we infer the type of the entire function applied to fun. The quotes in ML indicate generic types. Like, for instance, here, um, quote, A can be any type. Notice then that the type of applied to fun is quite generic. As we will see in the next class, we can do this type this kind of type inference that we had seen in the previous example in three steps. First, we generate constraints out of the program. Then we solve these constraints using an algorithm called unification. And finally, we annotate the program with the correct types that we have inferred. And we shall say that the type inference algorithm is correct if we can type check the program annotated with the inferred types. And with this example, we conclude our introduction to type inference. In the next class, we shall see how to do constraint-based type inference. So there, you feel free to write me with questions and comments. Thank you.